King Arthur and his Knights by Elizabeth Ladora Merchant Continuing the Vision of Sir Bars It will be a wonderful day, she said under her breath, the most wonderful day that the Knights of the Round Table have ever seen. We have had many adventures, replied Sir Bors. We have seen the fairy hunt and followed the great white stag. We have done homage to the ladies of the lake and have slain giants and killed terrible beasts and taken over the guardianship of the fairy fountain under the green tree. We have wandered in the enchanted forest and seen the fairy salmon and ridden on his back. What is this adventure that will come with Galahad, the little babe here who is to grow up into such a wonderful knight? But still neither the king nor the princess would answer. They only smiled and shook their heads and told him to follow them up the stairs of the castle, and they would show him a sight even more wonderful than all the rest. So up the stairs of the castle went Sir Bors with the king and the princess who still carried the babe, leading the way. And as they went, the whisperings and the rustlings began again all around them. The little birds flew with them, while the staircase windows shed purple and silver lights upon their heads. Upon the princess's shoulder alighted the small white dove and bent low its head, murmuring and cooing toward the babe and swinging the little golden bowl on the three slim chains towards the child's fingers. And tiny Galahad awoke and caught at the pretty shining thing and cried out with delight, you know, in the crib. Girls tend more to look towards faces, boys, things. Just ahead of the procession, it seemed to Sir Bors that the spirit of the strange castle, or whoever that lovely lady might be, moved dimly yet brightly with the silver cup held in her white fingers, and always the golden light that came from the candle flame shone on her face and hands and hair. They went on up and up and up, and then just under the high roof of the castle they came to a closed door studded with massive iron nails. The maiden vanished, and Sir Bors thought she had slipped through the door just as a moonbeam might pass through the glass of a window. But the king brought out a great golden key from his pocket, and my stomach grumbled out, too, and again, and put it into a, the lock. He turned it with a grating sound and pushed the door wide open. Then, though all was dark in the staircase, a great light, like a brilliance of a summer day, poured out of the room under the castle roof. The little birds flew in as they had found their home, and the white dove spread its wings as it perched on the princess's shoulder and followed the rest. You know, we're kind of getting into symbolic angel territory, aren't we? Then came a burst of song from the joyful birds, now settled among the blossoming branch, branches of the trees, and the scent of flowers to Sir Bors, it seemed like Almond Bloom came out of the room together with their music, but when he peeped in expectingly somehow to see a, gar a garden, he saw not a garden, but a room full of shadows. In the center of the room stood a table exactly like the round table in every way, except that instead of being made of oak, it was made of the brightest, purest silver. And in the center of the table stood Joseph's lost shining cup. Barba low, you know. Anyways, um, Sir, well, Barba low is not part of it, but, you know, um, Sir Bors stood and drank in the beautiful sight, with his soul gazing out of his eyes, then because he could stand it no longer, for he seemed to be in the heart of some place that was far more beautiful than fairyland. He hid his face in his hands. When he uncovered his eyes again, King Pelas had closed the door, and Princess Elaine was singing to the, the babe to sleep on the stairs. Go, back to King Arthur, said the king. Tell him what you have seen, and bid all the knights of the round table await the coming of Galahad.
you know, the symbolic water being the cup, the symbolic earth being the table, and... But these things referring also to the... You don't have to think female, but, you know, that the side that's usually personified is the female and the negative and, and the reflective and... Um, various other symbolisms could be brought forth. But the glory of our own spiritual lives is greater than any vision.